Hey guys, today in this video we're going to build an induction generator. I'm going to walk you through it. Okay, the first thing you got to do, you got to plan out your build so you know exactly what you need to get. First thing you got to get is an induction motor, obviously. And there are different types of induction motors. The one I'm using in the video is the one you see most common without starting or run capacitors. If you get a motor that has start or run capacitors, they have to be removed and the the switch has to be changed inside of them because the capacitors will interfere with the induction generator. And you must use motor run capacitors for the induction generator. If you use motor start or any other electrolytic capacitor, they can and usually will explode because they're under a lot of stress and abuse from a generator like this. I know from experience because a couple of years ago I was working on a generator and had an electrolytic capacitor explode in my face. Okay, you're looking at a diagram of the induction generator I'm building. You'll see an engine on the left side. That's just a basic drawing of one. And the induction motor there. You notice a little note in red that says if you want the engine to run at full RPM, so you get maximum power out of the engine, you have to change the drive ratio on the pulleys to get the RPM right on the generator. Because if you get your motor, the induction motor running too fast or too slow, it'll change your frequency. And you want to get your frequency as close as possible to 60 hertz. What that means is, if you have a setup like you see in the picture here, the same size pulley on the engine and on the motor, the motor turns the same RPM as the engine, which is how I had mine set up because I was using a bigger engine than needed, so the engine was just idling at 1800 RPM, which was enough to keep the generator generating because the induction motors have to keep a steady RPM slightly above their nameplate rating. Now the rating on this motor was 1750 RPM. So you get between 1800 and 1850 RPM, it should be enough to keep it generating. I'll be showing a schematic of how to wire it here in just a second. This gives you a rough idea. And on the right side you'll see two capacitors hooked up. That's just for an example. It could be any number of capacitors depending on your setup. It says everything is wired in parallel. If you look, the capacitors, the motor, and the receptacle is all wired in parallel with each other. And there's also a note there that says a motor run rated for at least twice working voltage. I recommend three times voltage. So if you're this generator be 120 volts, so you should have at least a, approximately at least a 300 to 330 volt capacitor, but no less than twice the working voltage. Okay, now you're looking at a schematic of how the generator is wired. This might be easier for you to understand how it's hooked up and everything. You note the bottom left corner, you'll see uh, two keys. The wire collar key and the connections key. This shows what color the lines mean. What, like the black is a hot wire. The gray, which usually is a white. You can't see white on this. That's a neutral. And the green's a ground. And the connections, if you note the top, it says connection because of the dark gray box which would represent a solder or a wire nut connection and if the wire just passes over like the bottom two it's a no connection it's just passing past the wire you also know right beside the motor on the right side you see a blue star pointing at the black wire it'd probably be best to put a second fuse here this way if something happens in the capacitor box or anywhere else it will uh, blow the fuse and protect your motor and I noted again on the right side, you must use motor run capacitors. Any other will explode. And if you look inside the capacitor box here, you see four capacitors hooked in parallel. That's just an example. You may have some hooked in series with others in parallel. It just depends on what your ratings are and your capacitors, your capacitance and your voltage ratings. I do have a video on here on uh, capacitor calculations on series and parallel. That may be useful when you're doing your planning here. Now once you plan out your build and get everything you need, you're ready to start building it. You also need a box to mount a receptacle in and a cover for it. 
and one to two fuse holders, holders and fuses. And uh, you need an enclosure for your capacitors, and you need an induction motor. Okay, when you if you're gonna build one, the first thing you need to do is get a motor, electric motor, obviously. I mean, you have to make sure it's an induction motor. And uh, just about 90% of these bigger motors, like uh, you see in washing machines and dryers and general purpose motors like this one, they're all induction motors which means it don't have brushes and there's no coils of wire on the armature in fact it's not called an armature it's called a rotor on one of these and this is your shaft and your pulley here and I got a belt for it that's going to go over here to an engine we'll get the engine set up last on it I already got the motor mounted to a board now this is just a temporary setup to show you guys how it works and I don't really have a metal on hand right now to build a actual generator which I do plan to do later on this summer or next summer okay once you get a get your motor you gotta make sure it works because if it don't work it ain't gonna work as a generator I already got this wired up and it works pretty good probably not a bad idea to put some little bit of just a little dab of motor oil on the bearings get the back one here you're going to be working pretty hard as a induction generator here. Man, that's running pretty good. One way I determine if these are induction motors or not without having to take it apart is if you listen, when I turn it off, you hear a clicking sound. Right there. What that sound is, is a centrifugal switch that turns the starting windings off. Once the motor comes up to speed, it makes that noise at the end because the motor slows down past the, the certain RPM. Okay, and once you determine if your motor is an induction motor and that it works, it's time to move on to getting everything wired up. Now I'm going to have a box here with all these capacitors in there, and i got four more besides these. Uh, these are just, uh, these are 60 microfarads apiece. This is 180, and I got 70 over there, so that brings the total capacitance up to 250 microfarads. It seems like an awful lot to me, and I found charts on the internet saying that I just need like a like 100 to 150 microfarad. I've tried that, and it don't work. But about 200 to 250, and it starts generating. Also, another good point to bring up: you got to make sure what direction your motor spins when it runs. You see this is moving counterclockwise facing the pulley. So you got to make sure that your engine is spinning the same direction. If it's not, you have to get another motor. Uh, this type of motor here has got a shaft on both ends. So if this was spinning the wrong direction, I will just turn it around and put the pulley on the other end and it'd be ready to go. And also on these capacitors, or any capacitor, always make sure that you're discharged, that there's no charge on them before you even think about hooking them up or touching them or anything. These are all brand new and they came from the factory discharge, but there's always a possibility that they could start building up a charge from static electricity or something. You just never know. Well, I got all the capacitors wired up. In this case, they're all in parallel, but if your voltages and capacitive rating, ratings are different, you may have some of them in series and vice versa. I got a green ground wire here tied into a grounding screw to ground this box here. And I got the wires coming off the capacitors coming in here like that. Now the polarity don't matter on the motor run capacitors. It would go either way. And this is your ground. I'll tie that into the box. And if the motor had a ground, I would tie that in here too. Because with any generator, you're supposed to tie it into your grounding on your house. Most people don't, but it's if I ever do, the everything will be grounded here. Now I'm just going to hook everything up here. I'm just using an old computer power supply case <clears throat> to hold these capacitors in. I got my meter hooked up to it and I'm reading 246 microfarad. I had it figured to be 250, but that's close enough. It should work fine. Also note, I can't find the cover for this. I'm just going to leave it like this for right now until I can find it. 
uh, if you do it yourself, make sure you got all this covered. You don't want to touch anything here because uh, 120 volts can kill you. I decided to use these spade connectors to get a better connection. Stranded wire don't always fit too good on the screws. This way, be sure to get a good connection on it. And we're just going to put that down there and put it in like you would a regular receptacle. I got the receptacle bolted down here. Make sure the wire is down there. Get ready to put a cover on there. Now you're probably thinking I should put a fuse or a circuit breaker on here. And I probably should, but I'm not sure exactly how many amps this thing will uh, put out. I don't want to underrate it or overwrite it, so we'll uh, determine that later. And besides that, with these induction generators, if you get a short circuit or you overload it, it just stops putting out fire. So you can't really hurt nothing anyway. Yeah, I got the receptacle cover put on there, and all the wiring's done. I still like to find this cover though. Well, I got the motor mounted on there. I got the belt put on. I done run it, and it's working now. Uh, I got the motor. The motor's sitting a little sideways. The belt's not lined up perfect. Not that big a deal because this ain't a permanent setup. It's long enough to make a video to show you guys how how you put one together, basically. I do plan on building an actual uh, frame, like you see generators mounted on, put wheels on and everything. Ended up having to take three capacitors out of it. So now I just got that. I could get by the smaller box, but I'm just going to leave that for right now. I'm going to put that cover back on there and we'll fire it up and I'll show you what it does. And with any generator, just be sure you start it without any load on it. So if you start it with load, it'll discharge the rotor inside the motor and it won't work and you have to bump it with the power to get it to start generating again. Let the motor warm up a little bit. That's with no load on it. Two hundred watt load. Three hundred too much. Here. We're down to hundred and six volts. You don't want it to exceed about 135 volts, it's about a 100 watt load on it. Now, I would not recommend running sensitive electronics on it because uh, 150 volts starting out like that by itself could damage anything, and besides that, the voltage is not very steady, it fluctuates. As you can see the lights dimming back and forth as it's running. Okay, now I got my voltmeter set for frequency. Let me start it up and we'll check the frequency out. You have to choke this engine every time you start it. No load right now. 62 hertz. A little fast, but not, not too bad. Now I'm going to plug in a couple more bulbs there. That's a 100 watt load. Brought down a little bit. 200 watts, down to 59. 300 watt overload, 57. Working for the governor's working pretty good on the end to keep it steady.
And now I got a standard electric drill plug into it. Draws about two and a half amps. It's slow coming up to speed, but once you get there, it runs good. You can hear it bogging that motor down.